It seems like a lot of people are getting stuck trying to decide what laptop to get when it comes to a computer science program or just as someone who's interested in learning how to code. And I keep getting asked if it's worth it to spend a lot of money on an expensive MacBook Pro as a beginner. And I'm not gonna make you wait till the end of this video to get that answer. The answer is no. And I'm gonna share several reasons why in just a minute. But first, if you're watching this video and you're already a programmer, before you bounce, it'd definitely be helpful to everyone if you would drop a comment and let us know what computer you're using and why you were using that. That way we get more of a variety of perspectives. So let's get started. First, don't go into massive debt in order to buy a premium laptop, whether that's a MacBook Pro or a Windows laptop, because that is not going to make you a better programmer. And if spending that kind of money is going to cause you some financial hardship, then you really need to be wise with your money. And this doesn't just apply to software development. It applies to anything in life. If you're in this situation, there's just no point in spending all of this money if you aren't even sure that you're actually going to enjoy doing software development, you could end up changing your college degree or you could be going down the self-taught route and just decide that this isn't for you and you don't wanna be strapped with all of that extra debt. You should really wait until you're a little bit more settled in the direction of your career before you worry about buying an expensive laptop. So just use whatever it is that you have available to you to get started. Second, on this channel, I focus on helping people who are really interested in learning how to build web applications because that is what I personally do for a living. But this is only one slice in a giant pie of software technologies and what really works for me and makes sense may not be right for you. It's important to remember that early on as you are learning software, you're also exploring the different options. It's not uncommon for someone to start into like one programming language and then decide that they want to try something else and end up going down some other path from what they originally started with. So if you were trying to pick a laptop right out the gate, before you even really know what you're gonna be focused on, you might be picking a laptop that isn't going to be the best option for whatever it is that you are trying to build. For example, when I was first starting, I started learning C Sharp and ASP.NET, but then I ended up switching over to JavaScript and have been building web applications with that programming language. And no matter what the operating system, it's just generally a good idea and wise to hold off on buying that premium laptop until you have a better idea of what you're looking to do. For example, if you're really passionate about Apple products and you wanna build iOS applications, then you're gonna end up wanting to go with a Mac OS based computer. However, Windows would be better suited to a lot of applications that are centered around Microsoft technologies. And there are gonna be other things that are better suited to Linux. Now you could use virtual machines, but that can still cause problems because with some of the newer M1 MacBook Pros, there's lots of tools out there that just haven't caught up with supporting that newer architecture. Third, if you're a computer science student, it can be very beneficial to find out what technologies you are going to be using in your program, and this varies across schools, and then pick an operating system that is going to be most compatible with your particular program. Fourth, I unashamedly like MacBooks. There's a convenience factor to it, and I generally like most of the things in the Apple ecosystem. But that does not mean that I have to have an Apple to be a successful programmer. I like it because I work on the front end, but when I was first starting out, I learned on a really cheap Windows laptop and I used that laptop for a couple of years. And then I upgraded to a used older MacBook Pro. And it was several years into my career before I actually bought my own first personal brand new MacBook Pro for personal use and software development. And that was a really exciting time, but keep in mind that the dopamine rush of buying a new laptop is going to run out and you don't wanna be left with an empty wallet and an overspec laptop because you spent way too much money on a bunch of upgrades for things that you are just never going to use. I personally don't max out upgrades on my laptop purchases because I've had enough time in the industry now to have a good grasp on what it is that I need that would make my job more convenient. And so for software development, usually I err on the side of upgrading my RAM because that helps me both with performance of having a ton of browser tabs open, but also helps me with the video editing and graphic design stuff that I do. I also personally like to upgrade the amount of storage I have in my SSD because I do that video editing, but that is going to be different from you because you might not be doing video editing or design work. And so it might not make sense or even matter 
to upgrade your hard drive. And whether it's for software development or for video editing, I can say that every time that I've chosen to skimp on RAM and go with eight gigs instead of 16 gigs, I have regretted it because inevitably I hit a point where I feel like I could use more RAM and feel things bogging down or there's more memory swapping going on. Now you could get by with just eight. I did for a couple of years with that first laptop and the newer laptops are even more powerful, but I definitely feel that that typically is the one upgrade that is totally worth it. And this opinion applies to both Windows and Mac laptops. Now one final warning, if you are tempted to completely skip a laptop and go with an iPad to do all of your coding on an iPad, then I would highly discourage you from going down that path. There are several reasons why that, that is a horrible experience, and I talk more about that in this video up here that you should check out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Lates!